Hello and welcome to the podcast that explores the heartlands entertainment industries. I'm Brian. I'm Nick. And how are you doing, Nick? I'm doing okay. I watched you flub up the first intro. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Came in with like a little less enthusiasm, but you know what? You still welcome delivered it, man. Podcast that explores the heartlands are fair. It was, yeah, it was a real dejected, just yeah. like, I guess we're going to explore some stuff. Boo. I messed up. <laughs> but no, that second was right. Hey, man, that was great. I feel like I nailed it. We're in a completely different room today. <laughs> Normally, we're in our studio in, the, in Tower Theater, and we're still in Tower Theater, but we're, we've been banished next door because the studio is being used as a green room because we have the Rolling Stones battling it out with the Beatles downstairs. It is straight historic, people. Mick Jagger. Paul McCartney sharing the stage, and except it's not really them. It's kind of more of a tribute band, but bunch uh, of tribute bands. But the egos are just the same, and they're all talking like this, even though <laughs> even though they're from Delaware. How would that even go? Like, because I know Paul McCartney sounds like this. And I have no idea how the dudes from the Stones sound like because I never listened to the Rolling Stones. Oh, it's my Mick Jagger. My Mick Jagger is just a British accent and I open my mouth real wide. <laughs> sound like Pinky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Mick Jagger yeah. is basically Pinky. Are you pondering what I'm pondering, Mick Jagger? Oh, I can't get no <laughs> world domination. Clearly. But if you hear some uh, some classic tunes trickling in as we're talking, that is the uh, that is them just wailing downstairs. Yeah, they're just they're killing it downstairs. They're killing it. We couldn't uh, couldn't get them to stop, no matter how much we incentivized them. We tried to pay them to hush, and they said no. <laughs> I don't want to. Hey, God, Brian. And they just said, I want to hold your hand. And we were like, we don't <laughs> want to do that. Those and are like the two most obnoxious accents possible is the Liverpool. Hey. And then the, like, what is Mick Jagger? Cockney? I don't know. Again, I, I just, I just think, think. I love Cockney accents, but I, Mick Jagger. I don't think so. I think it's just wide mouthed. It's just Mick Jagger. Like, I think even if you. Talk in a southern accent, but open your mouth a lot. It just sounds obnoxious. It sounds a little obnoxious. Yeah, but uh, I'm you pretty know, sure we just lost like nine listeners. From all that of that one. Do you impression. think? At what percentage do you think we're Rolling Stone fans? Do you think like six of them are Rolling oh, Stones? Oh, they're like, well, this is just blasphemy. Oh, Mick, Mick Jagger, I, he is a tribute to himself. So we're going to play our favorite game. It's the Segway game. Ah, the Segway challenge. The Segway challenge. Yes. Uh, I think it's Brian's turn this time. Brian, how are you going to segue this? We had a great conversation with our guest. And how how are we going to get we, the audience over there? I'm going to I'm going to try this segue with a story. Ooh, unheard of. A story that started with my afternoon with a basset hound. As many of your afternoons go, I, tend, I would think. It tends to happen. So I'm, there I am. I'm sitting on the couch. The basset hound comes up, sniffing and snuffing right next to me. Mm -hmm. And he jumps up on the couch, and he brushes his butthole across my arm. Oh, your, your toilet paper. I am basset hound toilet paper, and I felt stuff. Not that emotionally. <laughs> is kind of a nightmare. And I it was. It was kind of like... I felt violated by my basset hound's butt. Did he stare at you while he did it? Oh, of course he did. With the droopy basset hound eyes. I love like you. It, yeah, like it was something that I did wrong. <laughs> you deserve this. <laughs> yeah, what have you done, Dad? <laughs> Feel the rage of my butthole on your arm. Dad, we're out of toilet paper. So I literally had to get up and like wash my arm. Yeah, how do you not the substance that came from his butthole? How do you not like shower? And, and like, then I even had to like be a dog dad for a second and actually clean the dog's butthole. Oh, which, that's the listen, worst. That's love. Yeah, it if is. If there was ever doubt in your mind that you loved this animal, it's when you have to wipe his butthole. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's when you know I love this creature. How's the potty training going with him? He, you know, he has accidents every once in a while, but at this point, it's out of my hands. I don't know how to control it. I can't get him to stop. 
Because we have a wiener dog who's very clever, and we have the basset hound who is also very clever, but he's like streetwise Aladdin clever. Yeah. Whereas the wiener dog is kind of maniacal, I'm going to end you clever. He's a little intellectual. He does it like, it really is like Pinky and the Brain kind Mm -hmm. of, where Pinky is just like- Or Pinky and Mick, or uh, the Brain and Mick Jagger. (laughs) Where we're going to poop today, Pinky. Brown sugar. That's all I got. I was trying to think of another Rolling Stones song and I couldn't. So what it did was that it created an incentive for me to not let the Basset Hound up on the couch. Forgot we were playing the Segway game. It snuck up on you. That is deep. It's not, he's not allowed on the couch. He's not allowed on the bed. He is a ground animal. Mm -hmm. And if his butthole stays down there, it's not going to wipe it on me. It's not an issue. So that's my incentive to keep the dog off the furniture because I don't want his butt substance on my arm. Do any of us? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's going to be more to that sentence. No. Do any of us? Question mark. Do any of us want? You know, speaking of butts? incentives. <laughs> there we go. That's I'm what so we need to talk about. I'm so yeah, that's what we're that's what we're all itching for. <laughs> like an itchy butthole. Like an itchy butthole. Oh god. Well Tava's gonna hate this segue. <laughs> this is, I don't know. I've, I don't I I feel like you kinda won the segue game. <laughs> well, let's go to our conversation with Tava Sofsky, uh, and we're gonna be talking about the film incentive. <laughs> So today we're talking about the Oklahoma Film Rebate Program with our state film commissioner, Ms. Tavisovsky. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's great to be back to Oki Show Show. This mm-hmm. is your second time on and the last time you were on, golly. She yeah. vowed never again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we had to change venues. We had to change all of our full setup. We had to switch Kelly out. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly's completely... Actually, I don't think he, Kelly was even on whenever you came Oh, on. wow. That is... That, that is she, early. That was so long ago. Wow. I know. Jeez. So here so we are. So long ago, I can't remember. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> well, and plus you're doing also, you, you do this kind of stuff all the time, which is, so thank you so much for mm-hmm. gracing us with your evening and yes. coming on to talk about the film re- rebate program and all that kind of and stuff. Thank you for having me at the Tower Theater. Yes, I know. Tower. Awesome venue. There's some cool music going on downstairs, and I think. We don't have the water bottles out with the labels on them, but thank you, Tower. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pretend. Yeah, so if uh, if the listeners, if you guys hear random what sounds like the Rolling Stones or the Beatles, uh, it's because there's a battle going on downstairs. Oh, is it a battle or just one band? I think it's a battle. I think oh. I think the Stones are battling out with the Beatles. So this who knows historic. what the outcome? Yeah, this is something it's be that freaking like freaking epic. Everyone from the '60s this is probably like their fantasy, so. uh, right? They're all lined up out there. Yeah, it? yeah. Oh yeah. I saw a lot of a lot of gray hair downstairs, <laughs> which is you which said is it, awesome. Not me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna treat our audience right now. Like they have no idea about the film rebate, about the film commission, about anything. So we're gonna start with the basics, which is what exactly is the film commission? The film commission is technically where the Oklahoma Film and Music Office, Mm -hmm. we are a division under the State Tourism Agency. And our office has actually been in existence for 40 years, which is a long time. So that tells you To me, that speaks volumes. That is how long the state has valued the film industry. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this was back before a lot of the S.E. Hinton movies were done and uh, back in the 70s before we um, became a film office. So this year we are celebrating 40 years, and we'll talk about the Film and Music Conference a little bit later. But about a decade ago, the music side was added to the office because we have such incredible, rich musical uh, heritage that we figured somebody needs to promote this and and foster continuing talent. And so, um, so that is our purpose: is promoting and connecting and supporting both the film and music industry professionals. So whether you're an actor, a filmmaker, a music business, you know, professional, or an artist really of any kind. Um, We want to be, we'd love to be your one-stop shop if you are looking for a job, and we post so many job opportunities. Um, If you have done something significant, utilize the rebate program, which we'll talk about, 
or anything like that. We like to promote, you know, those efforts in the state. And then we're partnering with statewide music and film festivals to, um, to again, give more opportunity to our local professionals. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. just, and we just connect all the missing dots. Just good stuff. Good well, stuff. Good and stuff. like for any film professional kind of anywhere in the country, mm-hmm. kind of the first thing that you need to do if you're wanting to get steady employment is to look up the film commission of that state. Typically that's what people do. Yes. First, first you need a computer. Let's, let's really. Step one, know what you're doing. Yes. <laughs> step two. <laughs> well, step one, wake up. Right. You need a device of some kind <laughs> and then just go to okfilmmusic.org. And literally, there are so many resources there. I sometimes forget how much is really there. Um, but if you're if you're a filmmaker or a music maker, we have two directories that you can register in: production directory and music directory. So it's really a simple step process. You just submit your profile information, your credentials, your contact information, and then um, our in-house locations film and um, locations coordinator Yusuf Kazami plugging Yusuf. I'll try to plug everybody, Uh, but he will approve that profile and then you're live and it's a free listing for people that are shopping for whatever it is, a a local, a local industry maker. Well, and we're going to talk some more about that, but I can say right out the gate that like having my name listed on the the film commission's um, listing, I mean, like that's got me tons of work. Like, That's awesome, yeah. And we've revamped it in the past couple of years. Um, our website looks great, uh, thanks to Katie. It really and does team. look so good. Shout it's, out to Katie. It's nice. Um, and we've used Pixel Mongers, which is based in Edmond, Oklahoma. And uh, it's, it's just very user-friendly. And Real Scout is the sort of the back-end um, company that helps, you know, that, that builds the actual directories for us. We have a, also have a locations directory. So if you have any type of location, you can list that or invite us to come out and scout your location. We're always looking to refresh the directory and keep it looking nice and updated. And we certainly don't want, you know, old buildings or locations that people can't film in or that are torn down or something. And so we just try to keep that fresh. And then, I mean, the main thing that we're doing is promoting events, promoting job opportunities, you know, on the, on the main page or in the special events. And so, um, yeah, so just, go there. I mean, we have yeah. a newsletter, we have press release uh, blast that we send out. So we're just a wealth of knowledge, aren't we? I'm saying. Love it. Yeah. Love so it. Cool. Well, and it's funny because like the, the, the film commission is part of the tourism department, yes. correct? Mm-hmm. And Oklahoma has a great tourist website if you're wanting to like you know, go on Adventure Road or whatever. Travelok.com. I, mm-hmm. I totally go to the film commission's location listing to look at really neat spots. I mean, there's cool. concerts and all kinds of, you know, cool yeah. stuff in there. But yeah, Travel OK is awesome too. And they, we have an app. I mean, we, under tourism, there's an app and I love the app. It's very, it's very user-friendly. You can just go, it's, it's, you know, categorized by date. So you can just see what's going on this weekend all around the state. Um, yeah. And you can build an itinerary. It's pretty user-friendly. So that's just um, Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department. Ah, that's so cool. And even if you're not going to tour Oklahoma, just log on. Check it out. Log on. Because there's yeah. Well, see, that's the funny thing is, like, I feel like I get my own little free, you know, tour of the state from working on these different sets. Because, like, absolutely right. we have yeah. incredible locations. Mm-hmm. We have, like, every different type of terrain possible. Mm-hmm. We have swamp people. Mm-hmm. We have swamp people. Swamp. We have and, swamp people and swamp people within <laughs> yes, the swamp, and the location comes with the swamp people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like they're real nice, just don't touch their chicken fingers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we we do have twelve eco regions. We have some of America's most diverse terrain, and people people don't know that. Um, I've heard different pe- people say uh, so. Tourism divides the state into countries, so we're seven countries in one state. Hey, mm-hmm. wow. You like that? Check yeah, that out. yeah. Um, 12 eco-regions. I mean, we push all of that because it's truly diverse, and nobody yeah. knows until they get here or they can experience, like you say, hopping from film to film. You're a business. You're working for somebody on a business just you know, moving around the state, much yeah. like an oil rig or construction site. There's really no difference. Yeah. So, yeah. So you are the film commissioner. Mm-hmm. And whenever I think of the, the word commissioner, I always think of like somehow it's connected to Batman. Evening but you are not connected to Batman. Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so what exactly does the film commissioner, what is your job as film commissioner? 
Well, so here I am. I'm out in the field quite a bit, uh, the face of the office, although I have to give credit to my incredible team. Uh, you know, my deputy, Jeanette Stanton, um, is out there a lot. She's also making things happen in the office and keeping us all glued together and keeping things moving forward. Um, we just ha- have we have a couple of new team members, um, Meredith and Lindsay and Katie, who a different Katie who's helping with the music side of the office. But you know we're a team effort. So I, while I am the director and I'm out and I'm the face, um, you know it, it, none of this would be possible. Just the growth of the industry without the the entire team, and then you guys. I mean the industry professionals. You guys are the ones sticking it out and you're committed. And so I just want to say a heartfelt thanks to all of the business, small businesses. And I mean, that's hotels, that's the vendors, and then the crew, the talent, the actors, musicians, the recording studios, everybody, you know, it's just a huge team effort. So I, um, I mean, oversee, obviously, our division. So we oversee the rebate, administer that, um, fostering different sponsorships and partnerships with people around the state and also out of the state. Um, sometimes people don't see us, of course, when we're leaving, but we're, we're out. I mean, recruitment is a big part of my role. Uh, and, you know, so we'll go to L.A., we'll go to Nashville, we'll go to, you know, different film festivals like Sundance in Park City. And no, we're basically just me jealous, we're, mm-hmm. but we're just, you know, trying to get face to face to people because they can go to the website and they can get the newsletters and they can hear and see and you know, even word of mouth, get a referral through another, you know, industry uh, colleague. But there's there's something about just face to face and 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 answering their questions and and telling them all the cool things that we have. Um, in the past year, I've had the opportunity to also travel alongside some state legislators and even Lieutenant Governor Pinnell, and and that's thanks to private sector people mm. like yourselves just saying hey i want to take my representative somewhere so he can see what you're seeing what you know he so he can hear why the studios are taking pictures on location why aren't they doing things just in LA or Canada right cuz they're looking for fresh you know locations and they're looking for skilled workforce we have that um and so on and so forth and so a big part of my role is just is getting out and and just educating I also love going into the film schools around the state, and that's one of my favorite things to do. That's my little secret, because these <laughs> Not kids, <anymore. laughs> these, these kids, these students, really of all ages, they they think that they're going to go to school and then they're going to leave, which is what I had right. to do a mm-hmm. long time ago because we didn't have much of an industry back when I graduated from OU. Woo. Um, Woo. But uh, Boomer, but uh, yeah, up. but the, the, the coolest thing is to just sort of see this like shift when, you know, when we're in there and we're speaking to the kid, the students and they're, they're just, wow, they have no idea there's an industry here. Yeah. And I mean, I've even asked students at the beginning of a conversation and then at the end, if they would leave or if they would stay and their minds are changed. You know, I think when they realize what opportunity that they can have when they're, when they graduate. Yeah. That there's a real job for them. Well, and that's the funny thing. I mean, like that, that's kind of how this show kind of came around is like one wanting to kind of put a highlight on the local crew members and stuff, Mm -hmm. but then also like letting people know that the film industry, it exists in the Midwest. You don't have to go out to California or to New York or Chicago Mm -hmm. to pursue a career. Like you can live right here. Absolutely. Where it's not a hellhole. Is Chicago not the Midwest? Poking holes in your theory already. You know what? You're okay. fired. All right. Okay. <laughs> this was a good run. <laughs> <laughs> Some say it is. <laughs> Some say we're the South. I, I know. Well, say. yeah. We're, we're not the South. Nah. Come on. We're the heart. We're the heartland. Okay. There we go. I love That's it. That's right. We're the heart. Let's bring mm-hmm. it home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Red dirt, heart. Love it. Yeah, so there there is true truly great opportunity for for any for anybody and that's the thing that we have learned more so in the past couple of years than ever before is because we look to other larger incentive states to see what they're doing. For example, Georgia has been, you know, taking a Killing lot of it. the market share <laughs> and they created a film academy, Georgia Film Academy, and it is a training bridge for anybody, and it does not matter what age you are, to just step into this academy program and come out on the other. I mean, you can be in school or be at a tech school, 
higher education or the other, or just come in and feed through this training program and feed right into entry, um, entry level um, jobs into the industry. And they're doing such a phenomenal job of that. And um, New Mexico, we look at them. We just attended their conference, which uh, was, I think, their fifth or sixth year doing a conference. And a lot of the, the participants at the conference, the batch holders were any, I mean, like middle-aged and up. It was really yeah. um, surprising. So meaning that if someone's looking to diversify their income or, you know, just do try something different, that there's something, as you know, in the movie business, you think about it, there's something for everyone. Yeah. Golly. I want to kind of um, hone in on Georgia for just a second because like their film industry has really exploded. And I want to use their industry kind of as, as an example as to what exactly makes a film industry within that state explode, mm -hmm. which I think it, it, well, what do you think draws an influx of movies into a state specifically? Well, it starts with an incentive program. Any state um, that does not have any kind of an incentive program, whether it's a cash rebate or a tax credit or a grant program, typically will not, typically will not get the productions. Right. So um, we like to use Georgia's three-legged stool model. So um, to be a successful industry and a growing industry, you have to have an incentive. We have one, which is fantastic. Happy to talk about that. Um, and the fact that it's just doubled this, this year, this know, calendar so year. Cool. And then the, but the other two legs of the stool are just as important and it wouldn't work the whole industry wouldn't work and continue growing if we didn't have the other two legs, one being a strong workforce, mm -hmm. and it's got to continue to grow. And then third is the industry infrastructure. So that's, you know, smaller vendors growing their, you know, equipment vendor, you know, their equipment rental list growing, right? Um, typically, that means more jobs in, in the different um, production companies as well as uh, sound stages and post-production facilities. And um, there's a new post facility about to open, like right and left people are either, they're, they're training up into the industry, they're moving home if they're expats, or they're moving up typically too is what we're seeing for the workforce. So, so, that, so we're on to a great start to continue yeah. growing and, and strengthening the workforce here. And then there's a lot of other cool stuff happening with infrastructure. Yeah. It's been so cool to watch because I feel like timing, like I, I very much lucked out on the timing of like whenever I jumped in mm -hmm. because whenever I first started, I think I started 10 years ago and I think we had, a, we had, a, I know it feels like a lot longer. Uh, I, I, we had a rebate, but it wasn't a whole lot and the rebate has slowly increased. And with that, we've seen, you know, the, the influx of movies coming in more and more and more. But kind of going back to Georgia, it seemed like they they the the big thing that made the biggest difference was them with them was whenever they got The Walking Dead and suddenly they had to be able to sustain this series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean a quick timeline on Georgia is in two thousand and eight. So they had much like Oklahoma, they had a long standing uh, incentive program. It had a lot of different mm, bells and whistles, or a lot of different um, different different parts to the program but in 2008 they kind of stripped it and they mm. removed their cap they removed their sunset and they um uh qualify they qualify anybody they, yeah. they qualify in-state and out-of-state residents and when they did that in 2008 they basically their the message to that was our, we're opening our doors all the way. We want everybody and anybody to come. And so in 2010 was their first soundstage built, which is just oh mind-boggling to That's me because crazy. they have over mm -hmm. 100 now. And they yeah. just announced a new one. Well, and they got Pinewood Studios ago. out Pinewood. there now. And then Tyler Perry just just had his grand opening a few nights ago um, yeah. to for his – seven big stages and and you know so now he can start doing bigger tentpole movies i mean who knows what tyler perry is going to do um there in georgia and we have a tie to tyler perry his attorney is actually from oklahoma city really yes mm. yes so a lot of you listening you probably know him or his dad um but um yeah so georgia's i mean they just took off in in yeah. 2010 
And now, I mean, their their economic impact, I think last year or maybe 2018, yeah, 2018 was $6 billion in economic God. impact. So, And that money goes into the state, is goes that right? Goes into the state. Wow. Yes, goes into the state. And it just, it creates um, more and more jobs. So what we learned from Georgia, and, and we're really trying to, to just take their advice and apply it, is that, because we asked them, what would you do, what would you do differently back then when you decided, uh, you know, to revamp your incentive program? What would you have done back then? Because that's kind of what's just happening now for Oklahoma. And they said, open the Georgia Film Academy sooner than we did. Mm. Because you're right, then a few years later, when they did get their big series, they yeah. got their, their shot, and nobody knew how successful it was going to be, but they didn't have enough crew So what was happening is people were, because they qualified out of state crew, people were coming. But then when you're on a successful series and you're, you know, you're going to be there year after year after year, then you buy a house. So then they become (laughs) a resident. So think about that, you know, the the tax um, revenue and advantage there for Georgia. And so it's just continued to grow and grow. But their Georgia Film Academy, their predictions are, it's, it's incredible. I encourage people to look at that. Um, we're going to model something similar, uh, the Oklahoma Film and TV Academy. Um, it's formed, and um, there's a, a great task force that is um, preparing the way and developing that program, that, that school, basically, to open in the near, near future. Yeah. Um, but Georgia, they're, they're anticipating three to 5,000 new jobs in the next three to five That's years, so averaging, and this is the best part of all, mm-hmm. averaging $84,000 a year. Wow. So these are Those are career jobs. jobs. Yes. Yeah. They're high-paying jobs. Wow. So, yeah. So we, we take note, and then we just get to work. Yeah. yeah. I remember I, I worked with uh, one of the first ADs from season two on The Walking Dead. And he had, well, he'd worked on season one and season two, and they were talking, and he, we got in a discussion about basically what we're talking about now. And he was talking about how, like, they had to train a lot of people to kind of build that infrastructure. And, uh, and I think about that all the time when it pertains to Oklahoma's film industry, because like our crew base isn't just growing, but our guys are good, man. Good. They're it's, really it's good. really cool to watch, like, especially like our GE guys, the grips and electrics, mm-hmm. like it's so cool to watch them do their thing. Cause these guys clearly know what they're doing. Absolutely. And, uh, it seems like every single time we have a production come in from LA, uh, you know, I'm a sound guy, so I'm eavesdropping on everything. Mm-hmm. And I always hear mm-hmm. that. I'm like, man, these guys, these Even guys off- know what they're doing. Yeah. Even yeah. Offset, he's just always listening. I'm always listening. <laughs> Sometimes it's kind of obvious because I have a boom pole and mm-hmm. I'm like pointing it in your face. Yeah, it's... it's. I think he's listening in on us. It's not the most subtle thing. He's no NSA or anything Yeah, like I'm, I didn't say I was a good eavesdropper. I was just mm-hmm. saying I listen. He's a blatant. Yeah. <laughs> But you're right. I mean, we get that feedback all the time. I mean, we, we don't even have to ask. Like, they come to us. The directors, I mean, the, the producers are all, you know, they, they brag about the Oklahoma crew. Absolutely. Yeah. And we get a lot of repeat people, like mm-hmm. producers that come in repeatedly with their own projects and stuff like that. It's, it's been, it's really cool. It's, and the neat thing I, I feel like with Oklahoma is that you can still get in. I'm talking to you listeners out there that are wanting to, to get in. It still we feels like, you. yeah, That's it feels level. like you can still get in on the ground level before it explodes, you know. Yeah, Dave, come on. Yeah. Benson, talking to you, bud. Steve, we're going to go through all the names now. <laughs> Cheryl. <laughs> so the rebate program, specifically, what is that? For, for somebody that has no idea what a rebate is, what is that? It's an incentive it's twofold. It's an incentive to retain our awesome talent in Oklahoma. You were talking a little bit ago about the above the line. Above the line is your director, a producer, a writer, or who am I forgetting? Oh, an actor. Oh yeah, yeah. But you're t- oftentimes, you're top four. And and oftentimes, an actor always forget about actors. Has their own project <laughs> mm-hmm. that they want to. We see a lot of first time directors also coming yeah. through to Oklahoma. Um, and we have so many awesome ones here. So it's to retain the talent. It's an incentive to keep them here as well as recruit. It's a recruitment tool to say, come film, come spend your money, come invest in the state of Oklahoma. So we offer 35% cash rebate. Some states offer a tax credit. Oklahoma offers a cash rebate, a very well-structured oiled program. And 
that is based on whatever they spend in state. So qualified taxable Oklahoma expenditures, um, they get 35% cash back after they've wow. shown their uh, document, proper documentation. So they have to spend this money in the state to First. be able to even access that 35% Correct. cash back. Yes, there's an application process up front. We have an application window, so go to our website and read all that before you just think you can you know, get the rebate. Yeah. Um, so definitely there's an application uh, process, and then you are basically in, you have a place in the queue, the rebate queue. We promote that on the website so that crew can see, oh, there's a new project. I better go send them my resume, right? Or even outside, the different producers can talk amongst themselves about, okay, well, we're filming the same month, so let's talk. Or, you know, they may stagger their dates or whatnot. There's a lot in there. There's a lot in the queue, a lot happening. We've had one of the busy, we've had the busiest summer ever. And we're moving into yeah. mm -hmm. also an extremely um, busy, active uh, fall and winter. So we're excited about that. Yay. So then once the project's in the queue, then basically they go to work. Um, there's a few other Things they have to show proof of funding and proof of insurance and things like that to make sure that they're qualified. And then they film, they hire, they spend, and then on the back end they get that thirty five percent cash back. There's another bonus of two percent that they get if they spend a minimum of twenty thousand in the state recording music or licensing music that was recorded here. And that's to incentivize them to stick around or if they go to New York or LA do their post. Um, then they could come back, they could score one of our fine recording studios and then get the, an extra 2%. So total 37% wow. cash back. Is that unique, the, the music 2%? Is it that is. unique to Oklahoma? It is. Yeah, that's so cool. I don't know of anyone else that's, that's doing an uptick for the music. I mean, there are a few states and we're actually looking into this because we don't, we don't get to talk about music a whole lot, but mm -hmm. we are looking into this and kind of in the beginning um, research phase to look at other states for music incentives. Um, for example, Georgia, mm -hmm. they, a couple of years ago, they added a, soul, a standalone music incentive. So if you start your tour there, if you record there or you score your film not using the state incentive program, just come and score then you get a, an incentive. And so oh. the the same year that Georgia added their music incentive, the state of Tennessee added a music incentive yeah. because they were losing business. So it really goes back to the business. It's like, do we, do we want business? Do we want this kind of business in the state or not? Yeah. And that's the really the reason to have an incentive because then it just provides more doors to open for yeah. crew and businesses. <sighs> that's so cool. Yeah. Well, and just to reiterate, mm -hmm. is that you have to, the, the film has to spend X amount of dollars in the state that goes directly into the state's economy, mm -hmm. that goes directly into local film crews' pockets mm -hmm. in order to even be possible to be able to gain to that. Get a penny back, yeah. yeah. They have to show all the proof of documentation, yes. And there's actually a minimum spend of 25000 in state and a minimum budget of 50000 because a lot of people will say, well, what about the short films or, you know, a, a documentary, something that's under 50,000 budget, then, you know, we, we don't have an incentive for them yet. Um, but they can, as soon as they get to 50, then they can apply. Mm, nice. Yes. Let's get up to 50, guys. So what is the process of like, say I'm a filmmaker and I've got this awesome script and I would love to film in Oklahoma to be able to get this, this cash rebate you know, to be able to get my movie made. What's the process for me with my script? What do I do? What's step one? To utilize the incentive, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Or the whole... Just the, the, whole, just the whole shebang. The whole shebang. Yeah. Okay. So you come to me or you give us a call and you say, I have a script and I think it can be set in Oklahoma or maybe it is set in Oklahoma. Um, what do you have? Then we would we would make sure that they obviously go to our website to back to to back up all that we're saying. But um, the first thing is, and this is often one of their first questions is, you know, do you have a crew base? So um, um, I would suggest. Well, my first question back to you would say, do you have funding? So what's uh, your answer? As a matter of fact, I do. I, I have exactly fifty thousand oh, dollars of guaranteed funding. Then you funding. qualify. What? Got, got one Perfect. fifty thousand dollar bill. And you think you'll spend at least twenty five in state? That's the plan. Is okay. to spend at least twenty five thousand in state. Okay. I think you'll spend more, but so so <laughs> our the process is is that if once you have your 
locked or your complete script, a full budget, then we have two rebate simple applications to um, connect you with. So you would just fill those out and those itemize your expenditures in Oklahoma. We we're just curious, how are you going to yeah. spend your money in the state? So, so kind of like our projected, like projected. this is what we're planning mm-hmm. on spending. Okay. So there's form, form A and form B and it's all on our website. And then we ask for, so that's all you have to have is those four things to get started, right? Um, it, you do have to come to us at least 60 days prior to the start of pre-production in mm-hmm. Oklahoma. And that just gives you time to prep, hire, you know, get your payroll, you know, agreement in place, your insurance, all of those things, and, and secure any final funding if you needed it. And then it gives our office time to process and just connect you with whatever local resources you need. So it's if you're outside of the 60 days, um, let's say you've got something that's further out and you want to do next year sometime, the furthest out we can accept applications is 180 days prior to start of pre-production. Oh, interesting. So you're in the window. You've got those four things. You submit your application. We take two weeks to review and then... We let you know if we have questions, then we get you into the queue, we send you a letter congratulate, congratulating you on being pre-qualified in the queue. Um, typically, in that first uh, phase, we would also offer to build you a customized location portfolio, and a lot of states don't do this. Um, we feel that it's kind of an extra um, you know, added customer service perk that they get, and it gives us an opportunity to showcase what we have around the state. So being that we're a state agency, we will we will show them the entire, you know, samplings of the entire state. Sometimes they think they want to be in Tulsa or they think they want to be in Oklahoma City or they know they want to be somewhere and then we can just kind of hone in on that one area. But typically they're showing the creatives, the director, the locations and what we have to offer. So your decision's made, and then you typically you would come and scout, and we could connect you with people, whether it be, you know, public school system or ODOT or the Department of Transportation or different location owners or the. um, And I have to say that our local statewide our community liaisons are like golden. I mean, they are so they open doors that we can't open doors to. So. They're super, super helpful, and we have them all around the state. And yeah. so we just get you on your way to connect you with, you know, the locals, the crew, and all of the local resources. That's that's, that's just that simple. That's awesome. Yeah. See, well, and this is the part that was always kind of a mystery to me of, like, the process. How and does like, it happen? Yeah, and, it like, just hearing it out loud like that, like, it's very simple, and it yeah. makes me want to find $50,000 to make a movie. Yeah. Just Nick, now you're realizing Nick, you want to find fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars on you. Well, like not. I've in, got a golden script. Not in these pants. Oh well, look in your other pants, man. But I can't. They got fifty thousand dollars in them. It's stuffed. Oh well, bust them out of the safe. Is your extra safe pants? Oh no, I keep <laughs> all my shorts in there. There's no money in them. I just really like them. You know the way that you secure your funding is really weird. You need a better system. There's a place called banks. Uh, Come on, don't trust them. Nope. Not for me. So speaking of funding, if you were to come and say, I've got a script, but I don't have funding, what, what advice can you offer? Because we do get that a lot. Mm. Um, I would say, or we would say, um, come to one of our events, um, go to Dead Center, go to the networking events, you know, go to our website, find Tulsa American Film Festival. I mean, there's multiple festivals and different networking events around the state, and somebody somebody's got the money you just have to you just have to connect with people and find like-minded people whatever your story is whatever that through line is somebody knows somebody Mm -hmm. who knows somebody and I, i know it sounds cliche to say you know come to our networking events but truly i think magical things can happen and yeah and and then you guys probably even know of more places that we don't where people can connect and and share those stories and i mean Things just happen when people get together. Yeah. yeah. So mostly bars. <laughs> well, and I can say, like, from the crew side of things, like networking events and just networking in general is absolutely pivotal. Mm-hmm. If you're a beginning filmmaker that's wanting to make a living doing this, like, learning how to network that's not just like, hi, here's my card. Mm-hmm. Talk to you later. Mm-hmm. Like, or you just go. Learning how to be personable and, and interact with people is so important. To, 
for yeah, absolutely. longevity. It's, it's never yeah. worked. I've, I've gone with my scripts and just kind of waved it around like in 20s little newspaper boy, like extra, I got a script here. Yeah. Who wants it? Get your, get your elevator pitch together, I will say. Monster and other <laughs> stuff. Uh, let's talk about the website specifically, just to re- kind of reiterate some points about all the different things that you have on the website. Because like I have looked at... at different film commissions websites just out of pure curiosity because i like nerd i like i just i do kind of like to nerd out of like we really you guys have got it together like the website is really really good so what are all the different features that you guys have on there thanks to our amazing staff at the ofmo have they all gotten a shout out I think I did. Okay. Well, okay. and our interns, I mean, they're the ones at ah, events. interns. And they're coming from <laughs> all the schools statewide. They come yeah. and they serve and we love them. They're yeah. incredible. Um, Thank you, interns. Yeah, I think me a I coffee. did. I did, um, unless you just came in after intermission. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we have two Katie's. We have a Lindsay and um, Jeanette and Yusuf and Meredith. And, and they are all amazing interns. Fantastic. And big, they are incredible. Big, happy family. Yes. Yes. So on the website, you've got locations. And with, mm-hmm. like, what, what are all the things that are listed with locations and stuff? So locations, you can search or add a location. Same with the production directory. So that's for crew or support services. And then music is musical talent or music businesses, support services. So those are the regis- those are the directories where someone mm-hmm. can register or just go and search and find. And it's pretty easy. Um, we also have an app. So that's my favorite place. If someone's like, hey, you know, I heard about this awesome sound guy, Brian somebody. And, Stop it. Um, and I would. He's I handing would, her 20 bucks. <laughs> I would literally pull out my phone, go to the app, and I can, t- I can search your name. And then I can just forward it says email to a friend and i can just forward your profile link to them and they get it right right that's quick. so it's, cool it's pretty it's pretty awesome um so those are the main three buckets as far as um the directories and then obviously there's a whole incentive section so it walks you through you know what qualifies um how to get into the queue and there's a whole lovely section on the whole payout on the back end because the, all the paperwork, it's not that easy. Right, Brian, yeah. you also have to have <laughs> a really fantastic accountant, which you can get in Oklahoma, and then they would have to run all that through a third-party review, obviously, right. on the back end. Um, so there's that whole section. The forms are there. FAQs are there. That's usually a great place to start if anybody's mm-hmm. curious about the incentive. And then there's, um, we have an awesome lookbook, and we've, we're, we've just revamped it to include a lot of new musical music components. So that's exciting. The lookbook is absolutely beautiful. And um, the cookbook's coming say. out next year. The cookbook. <laughs> well, there is a dining guide on Travel OK, which is pretty hey, man, awesome, too. Hey, that man, that's a big deal. Food. Mm-hmm. Yes. Food on set. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. So what else? Lookbook. We have the filmography. If someone's like, oh, I wonder what's filmed in Oklahoma. The whole filmography's there. There's a whole section on coming soon, which we're still usually waiting for, you know, the thumbnail posters to be able to post or release dates for that. And then news. There's a, I mean, we have a monthly newsletter. There's a whole section if you missed a newsletter because you were working on set and you couldn't read yeah, it. Then I know, you can right? go back <laughs> and read that there's um press releases same thing there's archivals for all of that or and then job opportunities that's probably our most clicked on because we go through analytics weekly yeah. um, at our staff meetings and yeah jobs that's a i go thing. to that i totally go to that section mm-hmm. constantly awesome. to see what's on the around the corner of what i need to put an application into and you know do you find it easy to then connect, to find and connect with the different productions? I yeah, guess. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it, I, I don't know a local crew member that does not utilize the Film Music Office's website. Good. Specifically the job stuff. Awesome. Like, we, like, broad scale, we use, like, Staff Me Up and Production Hub and all that. But I'll tell you, I mean, like, speaking to you local, you know, filmmakers wanting to dive into this. Dave. Like, you, Dave. Benson. 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 Freaking Benson. Go to the website, and it's it's seriously awesome. Can't wait um, to meet Benson. He's, Benson's going <laughs> to love gonna show this up, episode. And he's going to be great. It's like, well, they mentioned me, guys. I forgot to ask a question, and it's, it's a genuine curiosity of mine. But um, what are, are there scripts that have been submitted that are turned down on? And if so, like, 
what would be the reason for that? Well, currently, under our current administrative rules, which support the statute, um, we have, I don't believe we've officially ever turned a script down. Um, we've gotten a couple of, hey, do you think this will pass the test? So the test is truly, um, uh, th- there's one obscenity restriction that's outlined very clearly in statute. So no child pornography or obscene material, and you'd have to go there to read about that. Right. So we've gotten a couple of, do you think this will pass? And we've said no. And so we've never received an yeah. application. Um, but um, overarching you know, as we grow and as we get um, more in demand, I believe that um, our office does, you know, have the ability to exercise discretion. And ultimately, it's always going to go back to the goal, Mm -hmm. which is clearly outlined black and white in statute is, is this enhancing the state's image? One, two, is it, is it in uh, providing or increasing jobs? Two, that's two. And then three is um, helping small businesses. Yeah. So, you know, at some point, I do think that we will have to exercise discretion a little bit. Um, but yeah, so, but to answer your question, we've never turned anybody away. Right. So you're saying Just that Magic Mike 5 is not going to shoot here, probably. Not the kitty version. I don't know what that is. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> you're not missing anything. Um, what do you have to say to, you know, because I. You know, every single time I I go in for like a family reunion or, you know, meet the in-laws for Thanksgiving. But first of all, it's actually really funny because they always ask, like, how are your videos going? They're not videos. Dang it. They're they're in the cloud. They're movies. I've heard that. (laughs) But how's your pastime going? Yeah, yeah. Your hobby. How's your hobby? It's paying my bills. Dang it. But what do you have to say to um, the person who has, uh, has the mentality that, uh, the movies that come in are, you know, uh, I've heard the argument before that, well, Hollywood's just making a bunch of money off of the Oklahoma taxpayers. What do you have to say to that? Well, first, I want to address your in-laws lovingly <laughs> mm-hmm. or whomever out there might uh, think that these are not real jobs. Um, they are real jobs. They're full-time jobs. You're an entrepreneur. You're not even a freelancer. You are just employed by a lot of different people in one calendar (laughs) year. We trade one boss for a thousand bosses. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. But as we said earlier, I mean, you are moving around the state. And what I love about this industry is that it it is creating this economic impact and this halo effect as a lot of the economic, the uh, economists talk about this halo effect, this ripple effect of, of spending in different communities, you're doing that around the state. So you're not, it's not just the two metropolitan areas, which are awesome and they do get a lot of the work, but it's going into some of the economically, you know, undeserved or, or, or areas that are then getting this boost into their economy. And we have story after story. There's also a beautiful spotlight and testimonial section on our website. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could just sit for hours and read testimonies or listen to little spotlight videos about Brian people's Will. experiences. <laughs> you know, I forget I re- I've that, written but... quite a few myself. Yeah, you have. You, you have. And you, we have your spotlight, too. Yeah, yeah you actually, yeah. We have that, too. Brian wrote us another nice thing again. <laughs> um, and... and, and those stories are just magical. I mean, that's what keeps this whole industry going, I think, is, is, the, is the real anecdotal, the story. Um, but it does go back to the money, so we'll talk mm-hmm. about that. And, um, and the fact that the, the, the film industry, there, it's a real business. Um, matter of fact, when I had the opportunity to, um, to sit across a conference table with Senator Thompson, with the president of HBO West Coast, J. J. Rowey, uh, and I've talked about this before, so I'm talking about it again, but he had a stack of, of files, and he said these are all, they were budgets, they, these are all businesses, multi-million dollar businesses, and I am looking for a home around the globe. I mean, he doesn't just look, you know, here in America. He's looking around the globe. I'm looking for a place to put this business. Mm. It could be a $50 million business. It could be, it could be you know, a $100 million business for the next 12 years. Or it could be, you know, whatever it is. I mean, he's got a lot of them. 
do you want one, basically? Yeah. And Senator Thompson was like, how do we do that? How can we get you to bring something here to Oklahoma? Because it is a business. And um, so I view it, uh, uh, it's it's black and white to me. They're, they're bringing their money and they're investing it into our people mm-hmm. and our businesses. It's, it's plain and simple. Yeah. They're leaving their money here. Um, and, and again, that, that um, tourism or halo effect where they're spending, you know, they're spending their own money while they're here on antiques or cars. I've heard all kinds of stories. You know, they're spending gobs of money on, of their own money. And that's something that the film office that we can't calculate. So it's, it's helping, you know, more than we know. Um, yeah. Typically, they'll use a multiplier effect. So they're spending, you know, a, a lot more even then, then we know. So it's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Okay. Where do you see, like, let's go 10 years into the future. Mm -hmm. And where, where do you see the Oklahoma film industry in a decade? It's 2029, or actually this will come out in 2020. So it's 2030. (laughs) When when we're not fighting the robots. Right. The war has ended. It's it's a stalemate. It's a stay or a standstill. Whatever. Ceasefire. That's the word. Uh. (laughs) That's what I was looking for. So we're 10 years in the future. The Oklahoma film industry has been working this whole time. What do you see? Or what do, what do you see there? I mean, I would see the multiple layers of crew. Um, we're you know, pushing four crews deep right now. I would like to see that. I think we can be you know, 20 crews deep by then, for sure. Um, as well as multiple sound stages, which um, we'll be able to host larger productions, including TV series. And, um, and I mean, I think within the next 18 months, we'll have our first TV series like underway. And ideally it would be, I mean, the one we have our eye on, it would be iconic for Oklahoma to have. Mm -hmm. And ideally it would be here year after year after year after year. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, you know, I think once you get one, I mean, it's kind of what happened in New Mexico and in Georgia. Once you get one, then people are like, oh, they can handle that. Yeah. And then more come. So, I mean, plenty of work love to just to see that and plenty of work in a growing infrastructure that can survive on its own yeah ah well that's exciting i can't wait for the future yes it's gonna be cool it's gonna be real good especially after that robot war Mm -hmm. meets meets its ceasefire like that'll be rough but then after yeah it'll be that's a weird sideways prophecy that Uh we're gonna have a really successful film industry and this robot war will ignore that you know it's that happens important that everybody knows that that war happens out in you know California. Yeah. Read the cliff notes of it. It's yeah. fine. Silicon Whatever. Valley. It's all going to start from there, mm-hmm. and then it's just going to slowly. But it's never going to reach Oklahoma. Everybody knows that. Yeah. So we're dealing with our our own stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can I just add to that that I think one of the biggest um, focuses now, especially with new a, a new administration, Governor Stitt and Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell. I mean, when we're talking 10 years down the road, um, you know, I think that hopefully they, we will have helped rebrand the state internally and externally so that we are waving our flag as Oklahomans saying, we got, we got it. We got a lot going on. And then externally that people would think of Oklahoma as just as more than, you know, farmlands and western towns mm-hmm. yeah. that they would truly see the 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 you know the the layering that we have in our people and our locations in the ways to do business that it is an, a great place to do business you know low cost of living all of those things that were culturally sound i think that that would be i mean we'll we'll have that for sure yeah ah very yeah. cool David, thank you so much for coming on the show again. Yes. Again. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> having me. second time. Uh, where can we find uh, Oklahoma Film Music Office online? Okfilmmusic.org. And then we're on all the social channels as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Excellent. The one, the one that hasn't been invented yet. We're on that too. Right. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. The, yes. the, the one that's fighting the robots. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The one that'll Definitely. lead to the robots. Oh, oh, okay. Skynet? See, see Tava, we're, we're kind of working on a script right now. We're, <laughs> we're, we're working gonna, on that $50,000 of funding. Yeah, that $50,000. It's going to be great. <laughs> Robot Let me movie. tell you. And we're going to set the whole thing in Oklahoma. It's going to mm-hmm. be fantastic. Can't wait to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on yes. the show. Thank you, Tava. Thank you. <laughs>
Great, great conversation. I'm glad she came back because uh, was not here for the first. Kelly wasn't here for the first one either, was she? I think she was actually. I think she was. I think that was like that weird window because that was back whenever we were recording at Tower or not Tower. Um, we were recording in the Paramount mm -hmm. in just the common room. So people could walk by, walk through as just we were recording. Awkwardly. And it was just awkward. I've known Tava now for at least five years super, and she's she's great super smart super great super knowledgeable like all yeah. her talk about the website and stuff was awesome i really liked the list of uh locations uh yeah i didn't know that was, i i real i i did not know that that was on there and i think that's like super useful actually oh my god well and also like she mentioned the lookbook. yeah like we really do have some of the craziest coolest locations yeah and when you were working on the crew you get to visit those locations basically for free it's like I w it would have been nice like i've done location managing twice and then that would have been a nice little resource instead of just kind of wandering around and yeah getting into trouble and leading people right to like hey here's this place well you want to play a game kind of in that vein let's play let's play the game vein okay so uh we're gonna play a game because we haven't actually played a game game in a while so I figured let's bring it back. Let's embrace We're gonna play the a inner game. child. This is a game literally called Whose Line Is It Anyway? Mm -hmm. That's where the, the show got their name, I think. What show? I've never heard of such I a know, show. It's just some in, some show where people make stuff up uh, and, and make points, but the points don't matter. I bet there's a Canadian on it. Yeah, probably. Ugh, and a really tall guy with a big nose. Mm -hmm. So this is a game called Whose Line Is It Anyway? And the way that it works is that we have pre-written lines of dialogue that we do not know what it is that we're saying. I Nick not, has written some lines for me and I've written some lines for Nick. Mm -hmm. I do not know what's placed in front of me. He does not know what's placed in front of him. It is written down on <laughs> ripped up business cards. So we get to kind of play out this scene uh, and then we, we're going to just throw these random lines of dialogue into the scene and see what happens. Um, so the scene is that we are lost on a location scout. Uh, I am the locations manager, and Nick is playing the director. All right, so we're going to play this scene out being lost on a location scout in three, two, one. Hey, Jeff, I don't want to, like, step on your toes or anything. I know this is, like, your area, but, like, are you sure you know where you're going? Well, if we just go over this mountain ridge and to the right, we're definitely going to make it back to the city. Okay, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about, because the script is for an Arctic set piece like and i know there's mountains in the arctic but like you know it wasn't mountains weren't in the script i i, I should have said something on the four hour drive up here so were you looking for for snow is that what you were looking for like yeah we can you know fake some snow but yeah it's like some natural snow would be great be able to use if, that if you wanted snow yeah you should have been a little more specified okay on what we were going because right now we're out in the desert Okay, yeah, this is a very mountainous desert. And that's kind of what else I wanted to talk to you about. Kind of it one was, of the beautiful things about Oklahoma, bro. We got mountains, we got desert, we got combinations of mountain and desert. Yeah, Boom. Yeah, and you... Panhandle. Well, the thing is, like, I wrote it in the email. And anyway, the first place you took us was a swamp. And that's not desert. That's not snow. That's, I'll tell you what, brother. Uh, Nothing quite like an Arctic swamp, I'll tell you that right now. I, I get, I, I'm not one to argue with that. I've never seen that before, uh, an Arctic swamp or anything like that. But I just got a, uh, you know, I just had a, I had the note from the producer. Um, and I, uh, so I just really want, want, like, as we're looking, we just really need to keep in mind, uh, Paul's been dead for decades, so just He's been dead for decades. Yeah, just remember that if if we're on the scout here and you get a phone call from Paul, like it's not him. He's been dead for decades. Well, who have I been talking to this whole dang time? Ringo. What? Yeah, he likes prank calling. He his told Paul. me his name was Paul. No, he's uh, he knows oh, no one picks up. It. No one picks up for Ringo, so he's you know just kind of got to play against the rules. Um, it's getting cold out here, or it's getting dark. It's getting dark, man. It's getting dark and cold. I told you, combinations out here. Yeah, like Oklahoma. Oof, yeah, it's, we got everything that you could possibly ask for. It, darkness uh, and cold. I. That's no snow, though. That's one of the. That's kind of the main thing we needed. Is well, you should have chosen a location scout when it wasn't July. Uh, you you got me there. You got me there. But I just kind of thought, you know, you said you knew the place and could find us anything. Uh, that's what your ad said. Well, what my ad said, if you will go back and look at it, okay. it said, shut up and start the enema. 
I was curious about that. Um, I didn't know if you were saying it to me or if you, as you were like calling the ad person, you were at the doctor's office and <laughs> having to talk to the doctor as well. You know what? Truth be told, that's exactly what happened. Okay. Okay. I, so you know what? I owe, I owe the producer five bucks. He locations right. like to combinate things. Mm -hmm. Location yeah. managers, we shouldn't multitask. You're really big on combining things like cold. I like to combinate things. Dang it. It's a, it's a, is that, is that, is that usually what they do in Oklahoma? Is that, is that, is that on the state flag? That's what I do. I'll tell you that right now. Cause I was reading a brochure on like what uh, happens in Oklahoma. And I didn't read that, but I did read, uh, we don't need no edumacation derp, which depending on what town you go to, that may or may not be true. Uh, Miami. All right, now that is my hometown. Uh huh. Brother. Okay, you got that Miami and, classic Miami accent. And I'll tell you, it might be true. Yeah, I never got my education. No, uh, you don't need it. I, I firmly believe it. You've been a successful location scout, I think, until this one. Um, but you seem to have been doing just fine without no education. Well. I'll tell you, I might need one right now because I we are lost as heydays. Yeah, uh, I knew it. I don't even know where we is anymore. Is that is that the ocean? God dang it, I think it is. How, wait, if we're in Oklahoma. There is no ocean. Wait, there's a sign right over there, and it says, so that's where I left the... <laughs> Can you read that for I believe, me? I believe that sign. If I look at that sign, I can clearly... My eyes oh, are going. No. I, if I, if it looks like the pen ran on that sign a little bit, but it clearly says, so that's where I left the turkey baster. Oh. Well, here we is. That's what they get for writing their uh, signs in uh, ink like that. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Oh, poor penmanship again. Rex, another improv game. Actually, I tried. You know I was what? like, this, I've got this. You know Wait, what? I, I don't got I, this. I was sitting over here. I My pen was uh, kind of, a, I don't know how you describe it, like a wetter pen or something. Like one where you have to like dry it on the paper. This and I was sitting worst. drying it for like two minutes and it's still, pens. still smeared. Usually like <laughs> smear on my bagel, but not on my cards. This is a, this is a PG-13 show, sir. It's a schmear with a C-H and a K. You, there are ladies present somewhere. I don't know why I've gone back into my location manager character. Man. <laughs> the, the you know what's funny is like, out of all the location managers that I know, not a single one of them sound like that. No. You could have just they done are an actually very educated. Could have done an impression I should of clarify. Yeah. Well, if you guys like what you have heard and you would like to get involved yourself, you can go to patreon.com slash show and become a patron today. In the meantime... Visit us online at okishowshow.com or Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at okishowshow. You want to you wanna take us out? No. Well, that's it. We'll see you guys the next two weeks. <laughs> All right. Bye. The Oki Show Show is a mostly harmless media podcast recorded at Tower Studios in Oklahoma City. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a five-star rating. If you're a business or industry professional that would like to advertise on the podcast, email info at okishowshow.com. Rates starting as low as $25.